Hello, beautiful people of the internet. What's up? It's your girl, Keisha. Sunscreen is by far one of the most important products in your skincare routine, but for people with medium to dark skin complexions, it can be the most difficult one to find. On this episode of Sunscreen for Dark Skin, we are putting Mary and May's Zika Soothing Sunscreen for Sensitive Skin with SPF 50 plus, PA++++ to the test to see if it's black girl approved. And make sure you stay tuned to the end because I have a little surprise. If you missed last episode, I will link it in the cards above. Make sure you're subscribed and click that notification bell to be updated every time we put another sunscreen in the hot seat. Let's get started. As I'm reading this SPF, I'm keeping 10 qualities in mind. At the end, I'm giving it an overall rating out of 10. So the product claims to be a moisturizing, whitening, and anti-aging product. Now one thing to reiterate, when you see whitening, when it comes to K-beauty, for the most part, they're talking about brightening of the skin. Not necessarily bleaching the skin, but brightening your complexion. Uh, it's cruelty-free. Ingredients that cause bleaching of coral reefs are not included in the sunscreen. It is vegan and it has 10,000 ppm Sika complex with seven kinds of fermented centella asiatica. So it's very soothing and calming to the skin and it's meant to fit this checklist will be the judge of that. On their website, it says Mary May is an honest, clean beauty skincare brand that contains only safe and clean ingredients. We offer sincerity by transparently disclosing accurate, effective ingredient information contained abundantly inside each product to ensure effectiveness and outstanding results. And a full list of their ingredients is actually present on their website, which I love. Now, when it comes to the whole clean beauty, clean ingredients, I always give that a little bit of a side eye because there is no actual definition of what that means. That can mean anything to every single company. So I just kind of ignore that to be honest. But judging from their ingredients, they do seem to use very nice and like natural safe ingredients. And I do love their transparency. Mary Mae states that their brand stands for clean beauty, integrity, innovation, and clean environment. They are also vegan certified, which wonderful. So overall for their brand, I'm going to be giving that a point. Let's talk about the packaging. As you can see, it comes in a sleek matte tube with a dedicated nozzle for the dispersion, dis dispension, dis dispension, sure, of the product. And that means that it's not really messy. It doesn't drip. It doesn't get messy. It doesn't get all over the place, which we love. It also features a twist lock cap. So you know that it's closed, especially if you're traveling or if you have it in your handbag. And I always love tubes like this because you can actually cut it and get every last drop. It also states that the packaging is 100% eco-friendly paper and the ink that is printed on it is soybean ink as they do advocate for sustainable beauty. I, I really do enjoy this and this will be getting a point for me.
quantity. If you've ever seen any of my videos like this, you know that I always look at the daily cost average, which is how much product you're getting, how much you need to use, and therefore how much it's gonna cost you every single time you use it to really find out whether it's worth your money or not. So I already did the math. We have 50 milliliters of product. I like to do it in fluid ounces because that's just the way that I like to do the math. Um, in Canadian dollars, it is 36.42 Canadian. When it's on sale, it's usually around like $12 Canadian, so you can find it there as well. I would say this is about a mid-range, mid to high range, to be honest, in terms of the price for a drugstore. And of course, the standard 50 ml. I honestly think that sunscreen should be more like it should be at least 80 or 100 milliliters is what i would love to see but you know apparently that's the industry standard anyways so you should be using two finger lengths of this product for your face and neck which equates to a quarter of a teaspoon or an ounce is 0.04 ounces so 1.69 fluid ounces divided by 0.04 fluid ounces is 42 days this is of course this is if you're applying it once okay and 32 dollars point 42 canadian divided by 42 days equals 87 cents every time you use this. Now it's not enough to just look at one product. You have to kind of line them up and see, you know, what all of the averages are to really understand what this 87 cents means. The next time you see me talk about sunscreen, we are going to be rounding all of them up, putting them together and really figuring out what is the best bang for your buck when it comes to sunscreen. So make sure you subscribe and click that bell to be notified when we post that video. For now, as with all the other sunscreens that I've done so far, we're going to be giving this a point to make it even. Ingredients, my favorite part. As we mentioned, this comes with SPF 50 plus PA plus 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 which is four pluses. The four pluses means it covers about 90% of UVA, which means it's broad spectrum. And the 50 SPF is 98% of UVB. I always try to look for something that is at least 50 SPF. The reason being is because most people will not be applying as much sunscreen as they need on their face. So you always want to make sure you go for the highest amount or at least 50, because anything more than that's not really doing much more, but 50 is where you're going to get that really all around coverage. If you know nothing else about sunscreen, that is pretty much it. In terms of their ingredients, as I mentioned, it is listed on their website, and I did actually go to three other sites, as I always do, which is Polytroy's website, Cause DNA, and NC Decoder. These are the places that I pretty much always look at when I'm looking or evaluating products in general, and especially for this series. So in here, we have niacinamide, Centella Asiatica. As we mentioned, there are seven different types, including the root extract, the leaf extract, the Asiatica extract, and a, a, I can't pronounce that word, but a fermented version. Version as well. We have a couple of great emollients like cocoa caprolate, caprolate, which is really light and soothing to your skin. We have humectants like propanidol. Honestly, <laughs> I cannot pronounce these words, okay? They're gonna be on the screen. Uh, butylene glycol for the active ingredients, and by this I mean the actual sunblock portion. It seems like this is a hybrid SPF because it contains zinc oxide, Uvenol A+, Uvenol T150, Tinazorb M, and Uvazorb HEB. So good balance of UVA and UVB, and of course that zinc oxide is gonna give you a little bit of that physical or inorganic um, coverage as well. I I love seeing a blend. They do state that this sunscreen is supposed to be triple function, so it's supposed to be moisturizing, brightening, and anti-aging, and they do actually list what exactly uh, those ingredients do, so that's kind of cool. Another thing, they note that for the brightening aspect, this is attributed to the niacinamide. Niacinamide is a great brightener for your skin, but it's not going to give you like the brightest complexion. Like, Don't expect your dark spots to go away by just using this alone. There will be other things that you're going to need, but it's nice that it has a little bit of niacin niacinamide in it it's one of my favorite ingredients as well for you know acne for lines for all that good stuff as we mentioned it doesn't contain any ingredients that will harm the coral reefs so it's made without octinoxate uh, oxybenzone and others like that and it says that all these ingredients are EWG grade which as we know EWG has been very much discredited and there's a lot of issues with EWG, so I just take that with a grain of salt. I don't really even care if it has this EWG rating or grade. And they have completed hypoallergenic testing, so it's supposed to be really good for people who have really sensitive skin, eczema, just skin issues in general. Overall, I really do enjoy the ingredients that are listed in here, so this is going to be given a point as well. Application. 
So as you guys saw from the demo, it has a very light consistency. It's very airy. It's a very like watery liquid type of consistency. I did not expect that. It completely melts into your skin, which I love. And it feels like you're just wearing a moisturizing cream. And that is how I prefer my sunscreens to apply. I don't want to feel like I'm wearing this heavy extra layer on my face, especially since you're going to be applying a lot of this and hopefully you should be reapplying it as well. You don't want it to be heavy. And I find the application goes on really, really nicely. I'm, I'm, it's something I do enjoy. So this is going to be getting a point as well. For the finish, it is very light. As we said before, it has a skin like finish um, and it's non greasy. It's non sticky. Just let it dry down on your skin and you'll be fine. It's advertised as being something that washes off very easily, just like with a regular cleanser. So I tried this and even with something like the Inky List Hyaluronic Acid Cleanser, which is like such a gentle cleanser, it removed it. I applied at least three layers of this on my face when I was doing this experiment and yeah, it came off very easily. So no complaints there. I really do enjoy this finish. I do think it is for all skin types. However, However, um, if you have dry skin, of course, apply moisturizer underneath. If you have combination or oily skin, you, you may be able to just use it alone. So this is gonna be getting a point. Because of the texture, it is no surprise that this actually reapplies without any peeling. There's no balling up of the product. It doesn't feel weird or like have this weird like texture because you're applying something creamy on your skin that already has cream on it. There's, there's nothing like that. It's totally fine. When I apply this over makeup, you can still tell that there is something over my skin, but after some time, it just melts in your skin. Like it doesn't leave or linger like with this white, cast or anything like that. It goes away pretty quickly and it's not really noticeable. So I would give this a 0.9 white cast. This is always my favorite part. This is the whole point of this series. And I'm very happy to say that there is no cast. Even after applying this three times and applying it over foundation, no cast on my skin. So this is gonna be getting a point for me. Fragrance. According to the ingredient list, it does contain fragrance. It's a very light floral scent. However, I don't find it to be irritating to my skin or overpowering. I don't like a lot of fragrance, as you guys know, especially anything that hits you in the face. Something mild is fine. I do have very sensitive acne prone skin and I also have eczema. So if something was going to irritate me, it, it would have done so already. I haven't experienced any irritating with that, but just because there's fragrance in there in general, which I don't like to see too much, uh, this is going to be giving a, this is going to be given a 0.8 flashback. I did end up taking some flash photography photos with this sunscreen on after applying three layers of this sunscreen and pleasantly surprised to say that I did not see any flashback. Uh, so that would be given a point as well. So overall, based on everything that we talked about in the demo that you guys have seen, I'm going to be giving this a rating of 9.7. I'm glad you made it to the end of the video. I have a little surprise for you and that is, I also got one for you guys as well. So yes, today's video is going to be a giveaway. Uh, this giveaway will be running for a week and in a week's time, I will be announcing the winner here on my social tab. So make sure that you are subscribed so you get that notification. There are two simple rules to get your hands on this Black Girl Approved sunscreen. Number one, you gotta follow me on my socials. YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok, it is always its location and that will be linked down below. The second rule is once you're done, come back here and comment the sunscreen emoji. That's all I wanna see. Sunscreen in the comments, baby. <laughs> So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you've ever tried the sunscreen before. I would love to hear your thoughts. As always, click over here to see some of my previous videos. Stay gorgeous, stay fabulous, and I'll see you lovely ladies and gents in my next video. Good luck. Bye.